on in and have some fun. So just come in and learn with us with the mouse in the house. Hi, guys. My name is Max. Welcome to my lab. Together with our studio members, we're going to be looking at electricity and how to produce a current using two lemons, a sharp knife, three wires with crocodile clips, four metal plates, two made out of zinc and two made out of copper, and a digital clock. Let's begin the experiment. Cut two slots into the first lemon, about one centimetre apart. Now, insert the metal plates into these slots. Make sure you push them all the way down. Now we do the same with the second lemon. Connect the crocodile clips to the zinc plates of the first lemon, to the copper plates of the second lemon. The red positive wire connects to the copper and the black negative wire connects to the zinc. Now connect the digital clock to the open ends and see the electricity current flow. Can you tell us what makes the lemon produce electricity? When you connect the two different types of metal in a circuit, they produce a small electric current. The lemon does not produce any electricity itself. Instead, the juice in the lemon acts as an electrolyte, which allows the current to flow. If you use other metal, can you maybe perhaps shock yourself? No. The amount of current and voltage produced is very small. Can you use any other fruit? Yes. Potatoes, apples, or any other fruit or vegetables containing acid can be used. But lemons are preferred because of their higher acidity. Now you try. Remember to be very careful when using a sharp knife and always have adult supervision. If the crocodile clips are all properly connected, you will get a current flow. Here you can see the flow of the current through the lemon battery. The current flows from the positive copper to the negative zinc and powers the clock. So now we've seen how to make electricity using fruit found in your home. Test your skills with today's tongue twister. Fat frogs flying past fast. Fat frogs flying past fast. See if you can make any more shocking discoveries when you experiment with electricity. Well, that was another great experiment. See you later. Together with our studio members, we're going to investigate the surface tension of liquids making rainbow milk. Use the experiment to amaze your friends and uncover the secrets of soap. We will need milk, a flat dish, three different food colorings, a dropper, and dishwashing liquid. Let's begin the experiment. Pour the milk into the dish and add a few drops of each of the food colorings to the milk. Take a toothpick and dip it into the dishwashing liquid and then place it into the center of the milk. Wait and see what happens. Look at that! Check out the colors. Since milk is mostly water, it has surface tension like water. The drops of food coloring floating on the surface tend to stay put. Liquid soap breaks down the surface tension between the water molecules and allows the color to move through the milk. Look at that! Can you use any other liquid besides milk? Yes, any water-based solutions will work. What will happen if you put more drops of food coloring? You will get more colors and shapes. Experiment and see what happens. Why do you have to put the toothpick in the middle? You can put the toothpick in any other position. Try that and see what color patterns you can make. So pour the milk into the dish and add a few drops of each of the food colorings onto the milk. Remember, don't stir. Take a toothpick and dip it into the dishwashing liquid and then put it in the center of the milk. Now remember, you cannot drink the rainbow milk due to the dishwashing liquid used in the activity. Look at that burst of color. It looks like a mini kaleidoscope. <laughs> 
Did you know that water striders also utilize surface tension to stand on the surface of a pond? Twist your tongue around this. How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? How can a clam cram in a clean cream can? Find out about more groovy science projects next time. Bye for now. Together with our studio members, we're going to create a fizzy chemical reaction with household chemicals to produce a fizzy volcano. For this you will need vinegar, food colouring and a dropper, dishwashing liquid and bicarbonate of soda. Put on your lab coat and let's get chemical. Pour the vinegar into a container about two-thirds full. Add three drops of food colouring for effect. Stir some liquid soap into the vinegar. Add about a half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda into the mixture. Watch as it bubbles and overflows. Wow, look at that! Now see if you can do it. Pour the vinegar into a container about two-thirds full. Add the drops of food colouring for effect. Stir in the liquid soap and add half a teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda into the mixture. Wow, that looks like a real volcano! <laughs> we have used red food colouring to make the lava, but you can use any colour you like. Imagine what a green volcano would look like. Remember, you can't drink the fizzing volcano because it tastes horrible. <laughs> can you tell us what is the method involved? It is an acid-base reaction between the vinegar, which is the acid, and the bicarbonate of soda, the base. What is the name of the gas being produced? Carbon dioxide. Can you tell us what is the purpose of the dishwashing liquid? It helps produce the bubbles and makes it overflow. How does this experiment relate to real life? Baking soda is used in the same way when baking bread. Acid is produced by the yeast, which causes the bread to rise. This is what makes it light and fluffy. You can see the gas bubbles when you cut the bread open. Now you have an understanding of how acids react with bases. Thanks to chemistry, now you too can cause an eruption. <laughs> it's amazing! Let's have more fun with a new tongue twister. Can you can a can as a can a can can a can? Can you can a can as a can a can can a can? <laughs> and that's what science experiments are all about. See you next time! Today we're going to investigate the density of fluids and produce a simple lava lamp. For this you will need a tall cylinder filled with water. At home you can use a tall glass food colouring in a dropper, cooking oil and table salt. Let's begin the experiment. Add the food colouring to the water for effect. Pour the oil into the glass of water. See the oil is less dense than the water and it floats to the top. By sprinkling some salt over the top, you will be increasing the density of the oil, causing it to sink to the bottom. But look, as the oil sinks, the salt dissolves back into the water, making the oil less dense, which causes the lava motion. Wow, it's a blue lava lamp. Does a real lava lamp work the same way? Yes, but there we use heat to change the density of the liquid wax. Just like my giant lava lamp in my lab. Will the experiment still work if we use sugar? Yes, it will work with anything that dissolves easily. Wow, let's take a look at the red lava lamp. That's so cool. Now, have a try yourself. Pour the food colouring into the water for effect. Let's use green this time. Stir it well. Pour in some cooking oil. And sprinkle some salt over the top. Wow, look at that! Look, you've made your own lava lamp! Have a try yourself! Look how the oil and the water do not mix! 
Well, now we've learnt about the density of fluids by making a lava lamp using only oil, water and salt. <laughs> Twist and tangle up your own mouth with tongue twisters today. I slit the sheets, the sheet I slit, and on the slitted sheet I sit. I slit the sheet, the sheet I slit, and on the slitted sheet I sit. Now go out there and amaze your friends. See you next time. Together with our studio members, we're going to investigate density by building a treasure diver using a tomato sauce packet. For this you will only need two things. A 2 litre cold drink bottle filled with water and a tomato sauce packet. Let's begin the experiment. Open the bottle and carefully put the packet into it. Close the top tightly and gently squeeze the bottom of the bottle and make the diver go up and down, up and down. The density of the tomato sauce packet is close to that of the water. As soon as you compress the bottle, the tiny bubbles of air in the packet become smaller, so the packet sinks. It takes a lot of strength to squeeze the big bottle, so why don't you try a smaller bottle first? So all we need to do now is put the packet in the bottle filled with water and close the lid tightly. Now squeeze! Let's see how deep your treasure diver can go. Come on, you need to squeeze. Now you can imagine diving deep underwater and hunting for treasure. Where is this principle found in real life? A submarine works in the same way. When it needs to rise to the surface, compressed air is released inside the submarine and it becomes lighter than water. Can we use a vinegar sachet instead of tomato sauce? Yes, you can. Let's all try together to squeeze the big bottle. You will need all your friends to make the diver reach the bottom. So now you've seen how to build your own treasure diver. Test your skills with today's tongue twister. Sam's shop stocks short spotted socks. Sam's shop stocks short spotted socks. Well, that was another great experiment. Bon voyage! Today, we're going to be the weatherman and predict the weather by making your own barometer. For this experiment, we will need a large empty jar, a balloon, a pair of scissors, glue, a long and short stick, a cork, a piece of cardboard and a marker. Let's begin the experiment. Cut off the top of the balloon just below the neck and stretch it over the open mouth of the jar. Dab the glue in the center of the balloon and stick the end of the long stick to it. Take a piece of cardboard and stick it to the short stick and push it into the cork. Take a marker and measure the current height of the stick. Wait for a few seconds. If the air is warm, the pressure will increase and it pushes down on the balloon, moving the stick up. But if the air pressure is low or when it's going to rain, the stick drops too. Here, we are warming up the air inside the jar to simulate a drop in air pressure. What is a barometer? A barometer measures air pressure and helps to predict weather. If the air pressure drops, it usually means that rain is on the way. So you should take an umbrella if you go out. When the air pressure is high, it usually means that the weather is hot and dry and a good day for the beach. What causes air pressure to change? Heat causes pressure to change, just like a hot air balloon rises because the hot air that fills the balloon is less dense than the air around it and the balloon goes up. Now you try! Cut the neck of the balloon off and stretch it over the jar. Put some glue onto the balloon and attach the stick onto it. Wait a few seconds for it to dry. 
Mark off the height of the stick on your piece of cardboard. And now you can record changes in air pressure and prepare for a sunny or rainy day. So now you've seen how to build your own barometer. Test your skills with today's tongue twister. Stupid superstition. Stupid superstition. Find out about more groovy science projects next time. Bye for now. Make your own ooey gooey glob. By investigating the properties of matter, you can make your own Martian mud. How about that? For this experiment, you will need cornstarch, food colouring and a dropper, and some water. Let's begin the experiment. Add the water to the cornstarch and food colouring. Mix it together using a cutting motion, not by stirring. Keep going till it's all mixed together. You see, Martian mud has interesting properties. You can hit it hard with your finger like this. But if you go slowly, your finger will sink. If you roll it into a ball in your hand, it's hard. But open your hand and it's soft again. This is called a non-Newtonian liquid, which means that it behaves like a liquid and a solid at different times depending on what you do to it. This is the same principle as quicksand. How long does it last before it changes? It lasts about half an hour and then it goes hard. Why does it go hard and soft? Under pressure, it's solid and when the pressure is released, it's liquid. Why is it called Martian mud? Because the properties are out of this world. <laughs> it's your turn. Don't spill. You must use a cutting motion rather than stirring to mix it. Your finger bounces when you hit it quickly. And it sinks when you push your finger in slowly. When you squeeze, it becomes a solid ball. And when you let go, it becomes a liquid and runs through your fingers. So now that we have seen what the properties of a non-Newtonian liquid are, you can imagine what it's like to play with mud on Mars. <laughs> now try today's tongue twister. A quick-witted cricket critic. A quick-witted cricket critic. And that's what science experiments are all about. See you next time. Together with our studio members, we're going to lift a heavy object using pressure. We're going to make an air jack using pressure. For this experiment, you will need a black garbage bag, a hose pipe, rubber bands, a big wooden board and some blocks of wood for spaces. Let's have fun with the next activity. Cut a small hole in the bag and tie it to the hose pipe using the rubber bands. Now, place the bag under the board, which is lifted using the spaces. Now I need a volunteer to stand on the board. Start blowing into the hose. Remember to hold the opening tight, so as not to let the air escape. Wow! See what happens. It's your turn. Secure the pipe into the plastic bag by tying it close with an elastic band. Place the wooden board over the bag. Now get one of your friends to stand on the board and begin blowing. Keep blowing until the bag has lifted your friend. Careful! You might lose your balance and fall off. That's a funny sound. <laughs> so if you apply a small amount of force to a large surface area, you will need a little pressure to lift a heavy weight. Will it be easier to use a smaller plank? 
No, the bigger the board, the easier it is to lift someone up. How is this principle used in everyday life? You can use the same system to jack up a car. It's called an air jack. It works by filling a bag with the fumes from the exhaust of a car. So just by using the air in your lungs, you can lift your friends. Isn't it great to show your friends how strong you are? Come on, let's try a new tongue twister. The 33 thieves thought they thrilled the throne throughout Thursday. The 33 thieves thought they thrilled the throne throughout Thursday. Now go out there and amaze your friends. See you next time. If you like anything squishy and slimy, this is for you. Today, we're going to make homemade plastic. For this, you will just need milk and vinegar. Pour the milk into a container to be boiled. Boil for at least 30 minutes. Remember, this should only be done with adult supervision. After boiling for a while, a skin will form on top of the milk. This is what we will need to make the polymer, so the more skin, the better. Pick off the skin or casein, which is the polymer found in milk, and place it in another container. Add the vinegar and cover. Leave the casein for about 3 hours, after which you can take it out and have your own polymer, which is biodegradable. A polymer is made up of lots of molecules joined together to form long chains. This creates a solid that can be molded into different shapes. This is how plastics work. You can now mold your polymer into any shape you like. In the olden days, they made buttons and combs from this material. This was the start of plastic as we know it today. Why do you have to heat the milk? You need to boil all the liquid so that the solid skin is left behind. This is then used to make the polymer. Why do you need to use vinegar? The acid in the vinegar reacts with the casein in the milk, making the polymer or plastic. Now you try. Take out the skin or casein from the heated milk and place it in a dish. Add the vinegar and leave it standing for about 3 hours. making different shapes. Which other items do you think you could make using your homemade plastic? Wow! Look at that! <laughs> Twist and tangle up your own mouth with tongue twisters today. Flee from the fog to fight flu fast. Flee from the fog to fight flu fast. Find out about more groovy science projects next time. Bye for now.